Today, we become legends. Here's five simple tips you can implement into your Smite gameplay to immediately improve. These aren't meant to be game-changing techniques that require time and dedication, they're just quick things that anyone of any skill level and playtime can start doing to get that edge in-game. Of course, there are things like learning every role so you can know what the enemy and your other teammates will do, etc, but I wanted these tips to specifically not require a lot of time and dedication to implement. So without further ado, let's jump in. So first up, when diving or chasing, save your movement skill until the enemy uses the Theirs. Try to get in their face without using movement if possible by flanking around or using blink so you can save your movement skill to follow theirs, otherwise they'll just easily escape you. As I said, blink is really great for this because it can't be used in combat, so you can't really chase with blink. You kind of can, but it's a little bit more difficult. So if you can blink into the fight and get in and then save your dash or jump for chasing afterwards, that's going to give you a lot more success when diving. Number two, on mages and guardians specifically, don't overuse basic attacks in fights. They slow you down substantially and don't do that much damage compared to your abilities. Magical basic attack scaling is much lower than physicals and mages and guardians rely much more on their abilities for damage and control where their basic attacks are often a hindrance with the slow that it gives. The penalty for this is 50% for ranged basic attacks, so mages, and 35% for melee, so guardians. So just be aware of this and don't always be basic attacking if it's not necessary and won't massively improve your damage output, especially on mages and guardians. The lost maneuverability will get you hit way more often and the damage you might get from a couple of basic attacks isn't worth it a lot of the time. On a similar note for number 3, be aware that backpedaling and side strafing slows your movement substantially, so if you're trying to dodge abilities or run away, try to move forwards instead of sideways or backwards. Of course, you might need to juke sometimes, but strafing makes you 20% slower and backpedaling makes you 40% slower. And these slows will stack alongside the basic attack movement penalty discussed in the previous tip, but only to a maximum of a 50% slow. This not only makes you slower to chase or get away, but also makes you much worse at dodging abilities or basic attacks. So just just be aware that sometimes it might not be the best choice to strafe or backpedal in a team fight. This goes for boxing in the ADC role with hunters as well. Moving diagonally backwards triggers backpedaling and strafing movement penalties, which will cut your movement speed in half, causing you to get hit by much more stuff than you would have been before. Also, just jumping in here to underscore the fact that movement penalties can never add to more than 50%, and since ranged basic attacks already slow by 50% by default, it actually doesn't matter if you're backpedaling or strafing while doing ranged basic attacks specifically. Melee basic attacks slow you less, and so if you're strafing with melee basic attacks, you will be slower than just basic attacking like normal or moving forwards. But yeah, on ranged basic attacks, they already apply the maximum slow, and so there's no real need to worry about strafing or backpedaling while firing basic attacks, but they will of course slow you if you're not basic attacking and just trying to juke. Also, don't always just hold left click for basic attacking. This will also cut your movement speed in half, and sometimes it's better to shoot each one individually so you aren't getting slowed quite as much. Number four, don't always use abilities as they come off cooldown. This is a mistake a lot of new players make. Sure, this might be optimal for theoretical mathematical DPS since it puts the ability back on cooldown immediately so it'll be up more often, but Smite is a complex game that is about more than just strict DPS numbers, and saving your abilities for the right situation is often way more useful. This can also bait enemies into thinking you don't have the damage to kill them, but you actually do, and when you've landed a few more basic attacks, you can do your burst damage and you'll get that kill, whereas if you just immediately dropped it on them, they might get away with 10% health and your basic attacks aren't going to do anything for that. Just dumping your abilities also lets the enemy get a feel for how much damage you can put out, whereas saving your abilities can make it harder for them to judge your overall output and will lead to kills that you wouldn't get otherwise. This is especially important for movement skills as well, since you might get ganked or caught out by an enemy you didn't know was there when you used your dash and you can die for this. And finally, number five, make your minimap larger, drop its opacity, and put it near the middle of the screen. The default map layout makes it very hard to build a habit of looking at your map every five to ten seconds, which is something you should absolutely be doing. If you already have this habit built into your brain of looking at your map, this tip might not be necessary, but from personal experience, I find it a lot easier to develop the habit of checking on my map when I have to only glance slightly to the right, rather than looking all the way across my screen and potentially losing track of my character and what I'm doing in-game in the process. Dropping the opacity allows the map to still be in the center of your screen but be much less intrusive and you can still play even with it covering a lot of the middle of your screen. This is especially good if you're already familiar with the map geometry as the icons for gods, objectives and camps and stuff like that will still be very visible. But the pathways and geometry of the map might be a little bit fainter. Play around with it and find a compromise between visibility and map locality. I find it a lot easier to check my map more often when it's closer to my character and checking the map every 5-10 to 10 seconds will massively improve your overall all game awareness and make you realize the value of warding. 
And that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick video on a few ways you can improve your game very quickly. Let me know if you'd be interested in more of these kinds of tips and I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.